Beauty Bomb. Welcome to Whisper Wednesday. This is Let Me Boy to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. <sighs> So today is Wednesday the 2nd of October 2024. Now, I thought that Vinnie barked a lot when I did my normal podcasts. He's listening even more intently to the surrounding sounds because it's louder because my voice isn't blocking it out because you know normally I shout when I do these recordings <laughs> that's why they're so popular I oh, shout it I shout, I shout, I shout I shout all over the place um, okay let me have a look So my ancestry thing is on the way. So it's going to be a DNA test that I'm getting done to see what my heritage is. It's in the post, so it should be here hopefully the next day or two. So let me have a look what the, what the uh, ancestry ancestry DNA test I don't know if it's blood or is it saliva or is it wee wee or poo poo I don't know I really don't know ancestry my DNA ancestry my heritage does a similar one as well it tests for e ethnicity ethnicity T, T and genealogy DNA so let's have a look frequent ask questions T, 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 T. okay first one what is ancestry DNA uh, so it's just this episode so what do the results tell me Blimey, it's small letters I can hardly read it The ancestry family can build the lab. The results include information about your genetic ethnicity estimates and if you're and if you've chosen to see your matches and be listed as a match, identifies identifies potential DNA matches, linking you to others who have taken the ancestry DNA test. Your results are a great starting point for more family history research and it could also be a way to dig even deeper into the research you've already done blimey your DNA may hold information to make new discoveries about your family's past your ancestral roots as well as confirm information in your family tree how does the ancestry DNA test from other DNA tests? It's more comprehensive, of course it is. It's better than all the others. Oh look, unlike the Y chromosome or mitochondrial DNA test, um, you can stop that now, Vinny. Ancestry DNA uses an autosomal. I don't know what that. But does it tell me if I'm Y chromosome or X chromosome? You can stop that. If you're going to bark, Vinny, you could go in a bedroom, okay? Okay? Are you listening to me? He can't stop himself. He literally can't stop himself. Don't you look... He looks back at me like, yeah, what are you going to do? Oi, stop it. Behave yourself, good boy. If 
if he does start barking, I'm just going to put him into the bedroom. I can't have that. I had, it took so long to edit this morning. Because yesterday's recording, he was just barking non-stop. It just gets a little bit too much. I nearly made a weird sound then. I nearly. I nearly just quit yesterday's recording. I did. I just nearly just like, nah, I'm done with it. But I persevered. I kept going. We know what persevered means. I just continued. socks I can feel it more in my feet than in anywhere else and right now my feet are not feeling warm I don't know I mean they're five foot nine feet away from me you keep mentioning five foot nine I know and I will continue because I've been 5'8 all my life and now I'm 5'9 and I'm holding on to it like a wobbly chicken whatever that is that reminds me did I ever tell you that I was into magic like when I was younger yep I did I didn't I don't think I did but I have you know, that's something I don't think I ever, ever mentioned in all these years of doing these Let Me Bore You To Sleeps. I've never mentioned my little magic journey. Wow. Blimey. Well, it kind of, here's what happened. I'll, I'll start at the my way back. The end of my magical journey was when I gave all my books and all my stuff to someone that I used to work with who was a magician and he's the one who kind of got me interested in doing it because I was working with him all day every day for months and months, maybe years, I can't remember. So I kind of like thought yeah, I might give that a go. But I think I was... I don't know. I was maybe not in a good space. So I just gave gave the stuff away. And I just gave it to him. Because I thought he'd appreciate it. So going back, I just remember that. Because I met him. He was cycling. And I met him like halfway between where I lived and the road that he was cycling on so I probably was in Stratford so I gave him the stuff there was quite a few books and he cycled off and I don't think I really didn't really see him again I did see him once actually I went back worked at the place that he was still was at and he wasn't friendly to me anymore and I was thinking did I leave a did I leave a a, a naked picture of myself in one of those books because that would be enough to make anyone not want to talk to me 
but there wasn't. And they're like, why? If anything, you'd w- it, we were really good friends at work. Never saw each other outside of work. But spending eight hours a day with someone, five days a week for years, there was strange that he just, when I saw him the next time, and it was 97, in the summer, why not spring, summertime, I just, I think I did one day in that place, and he just said hello, and that was it, didn't, didn't stop and speak to me, because he had a new friend now. I mean, the whole experience was weird because I just went back. I needed, I had no money. Needed, no, it wasn't 97. You know what? It might have been 97. Blimey. It may well have been. I think it was. Well, they didn't. They gave me the worst job. When I got there, they had me loading and unloading pallets of the heaviest boxes of meat. And a couple of people said hello to me. It's almost like I was, just like, I don't know, the dirty penny re- returns, or what do they call that? A bad penny. Weird. I was thinking about some of these sayings that people say. One that I don't quite understand. I saw someone, I heard someone say this the other day. He, he wants to have his cake and eat it. Oh, you can't have your cake and eat it. Well, what's the point in having the cake if you can't eat it? There's no point. It's the most stupid saying. Can't have your cake and eat it. He wants his cake and eat it. Like, what the? It's, it's, did someone like as a brainless, brainless saying? It's so dumb. And I think that's the problem with some of these sayings. But do we just regurgitate what we're taught, what we hear adults say when we're kids? And we just continue saying it when we become adults without actually thinking about what we're saying uh, maybe I think I was quite lucky even though I had a weird childhood I didn't want to be like anybody I didn't because um, I've met people like my friend one of my friends he spoke like his dad I'm talking the same, the same um, phrases, the same kind of language, English, English, he, but the same phrases is, is quite weird, well, not weird, but I guess it's quite normal, but I don't have that with my dad, we're pretty much nothing alike. So I guess I've been quite lucky that I've, I'm sure, no doubt I've picked up stuff from people over the years. And there was a time when I used to say, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like after every sentence, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? And someone picked me up on it. And I thought, oh, perhaps I should stop doing that. It's partly because I wanted to be Frank Bruno. He was my idol. And he used to say that. You know what I mean, Harry. And I really just... I loved Frank. This was like in the 80s. So in the late 80s, I'd be going like... Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, you know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. And... That is... So sad. Frank Bruno didn't do it all the time. I did it all the time. And when I 
I said it, most of the people just nodded no. Oh, I don't know what you mean. Sardine soup. What sardine? Why are you talking about sardine soup? I don't know what you mean. Peanut butter's great for flying. You know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. So yeah, um, oh yeah, magic. Can't have your cake and eat it. What's the point? So, um, yeah. What's the other one? Everything happens for a reason. Okay, let's not take any responsibility for anything that happens. <laughs> What's well, gonna happen anyway? If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Okay, stay in bed. See what happens. Very little. Trust me, I know. So. Oh. Magic. So I'm going backwards from the beginning. From the end. Going backwards. Can't go backwards from the beginning. That's silly. So he was a magician. So I gave him that stuff. I... to it because when he started working there he was a bodybuilder and a magician he was three foot tall he was bald and he was about 60 then probably he'll be about sort of uh, 90 probably 90 now thing every now and then he just had to spin around and sing like there's no place like home there's no place like home and I was like well shouldn't you be tapping your feet together and saying that or shouting Wonder Woman when you're gonna do that and he said it's nothing to do with you leave me alone I said like that's fine I'm just just asking you know, and he said, no, you weren't asking, you were mocking. Stop mocking me. I said, I wasn't mocking you. He said, yes, you were. I said, I wasn't. He said, well, why did you get everyone, call everyone over before you said it? Hey, why are you filming it? Why are you posting it online? I said, I'm not posting it online. He said, you're posting it on Facebook. I said, I'm not post posting it on Facebook. I can prove it. He said, how? I said, Facebook doesn't exist yet. It's the 90s now. Facebook doesn't exist. It's not even been thought of. There's no internet in this country. It's just, it's weird. And he said, when you make that noise, you're making fun of me. I said, how am I making fun of you? He said, because that's the sound I make when I do a boo. I said, how, how on earth am I supposed to know? That that's the sound you make when you do a boo. He said, well, I don't know. But you seem to be aware of it. Somehow. Have you been speaking to my mummy? I s <laughs> I, s I said no. He said, okay. Because I don't want you going near my mummy. I said, why would I go near your mummy? He said, because she's a looker. And she attracts a lot of men like you. And she doesn't, she, she wouldn't, no, I don't want to be in with you. You're not the type of man I want her to be with. I said, I started to take, take it a bit of defensive, to be honest. I said, no, what's wrong with me? He said, how long you got? I said, what? That's... What do you mean, how long I've got? I've got well, there's still six and a half hours left of the day. Take your time. We both laughed. He said, oh, okay. He listed 
realize it took three and a half hours. It's almost like he'd rehearsed it. I mean, he did have a list. That's not going anywhere, is it? I'm going to stop. So, I kind of used to bring tricks in. Just little tricks, not, I mean, they didn't like start sawing someone in half. <laughs> took a bit of effort but he had cards and he'd, he'd do like card stuff and things like that and sometimes it just uh, it'd say shaka ba 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 and it just disappear I'd look at so he'd say look over there and I'd hear him say it and I'd look there he's gone and then he'd be underneath the table hiding and then he'd get up I he needed my help to get up because, you know, he was 65 and he only had one leg and one arm, both the same size, so it made it kind of a little bit harder to bend. <laughs> She 
was a very, very calm person. And from what I understand is because you're using both hands. Like my, my friend, my magician friend, he, he didn't like knitting. Um, but yeah, you need both because you use both hands, you have both sides of your brain which actually stimulates both sides, which evens out the brain, evens out the mood, apparently. I don't know. But it's supposed to be quite good for help with concentration, to help for relaxation. To me, it, it looks quite complicated. I don't know. I might give it a go one day. I think I need to learn from someone. You know, go to knitting classes. I, it sounds funny when I say it out loud, but... Yeah, maybe. There's so many things I'd like to learn. And... Realistically, probably not enough time to learn all of those things. You know, I'd like to have a degree in philosophy, maybe religion, uh, lots of different subjects. I'd like to have a degree in mathematics. I mean, that would be, if you think about like getting a degree for me was like traveling, climbing Mount Everest, that's almost like un, an unbelievable thing that I never thought I would ever accomplish. Getting a degree in mathematics would be like traveling, I guess, to Mars. Seriously, It'd be like traveling to Mars. Something that's just almost unrealistic. Ah. Oh. Wow. I don't know if I want to travel to Mars though. Do I need to travel to Mars? I don't know. Anyway, this magic shop. I'm getting excited now. The magic shop. House of Spells. No, that's not the one. In, nope, that's not the one either. I've lost it. It's gone. House of Spells. It's gone. House of Spells. Got it. House of Spells. It is in Chantry, Charing Cross Road which is, that's where the Jan Cross Road is just near Leicester Square, not Leicester Square, Trafalgar Square, that's what I meant, Trafalgar Square. Website, Harry Potter Shop in London. Right, okay, they're selling me out Harry Potter stuff. Right, this isn't the place. This is a different place. There was no Harry Potter back then. He didn't. He, he was... I don't think he was born. Right, so... This is just a place you can get stuff. Harry Potter stuff. Let me have a look. I might just want to check. Stranger Things, Game of Thrones. No. It's, it's not our magic shop. Not like Magic Cave, Eve Colm, Clark and Well, Legendary Magic Shop in London. Yeah, right next to Trafalgar Square. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Legendary. 
Legendary magic shop in London, that is a must. Legendary magic shop, okay. Let's find this one then. Legendary, legendary, legendary. International magic shop. Places legend oh, come on Magician's Corner Jane Street unless <gasps> that's it Baby has the place Legendary the Wands and Wizards London Magic School Orcs Nest Magic School I like that I like the idea of that Something else I'd like to do is go on to a stand-up comedian's course and learn to be a stand-up comedian. I should have done that when I was a stand-up comedian, shouldn't I? There were courses I could have gone on, just didn't go. I thought, no, I can get by on my own, I can learn. It would have been so much easier if I'd have just gone and got some kind of help. Wands, Wizards, Brendan, Patrick's Magician, International, how strange. That's really weird. Okay, I'm going to open up. Right, legendary. Legendary Magic Shop <sighs> This is really weird Because I'm looking it up But there's no website How can there be no website? There's a trip advisor Which says about going there. Legendary Magic Shop. Date of experience 2018. Davenport's Magic Shop. Is it Davenport's? It's closed. Go to districts, Tottenham Court Road, two minutes. Two minutes, Tottenham Court Road, Davenport's. That was what it was called, I think. Davenport's. Right. Davenport's. Ah. Oh. Hair and Beauty Salon. No. Brewery. No. Accountancy, no. Well, clearly it doesn't have uh, Davenport's magic. Davenport's magic shop in London, England. Charing Cross Road, The Strand. So yeah, that's the one I remember. That was kind of near Trafalgar Square. Well, everything's kind of near to each other. You know, you've got Tottenham Court Road, Leicester Square, Trafalgar Square, Soho, Oxford Street, Piccadilly Circus. It's all kind of within the same like little area, really. It's closed. Davenport is closed. Wow. Like forever. We don't need to announce the Davenport Magic Shop and Charon Cross closed at the final time, Thursday the 30th of January 2020. This is due to the redevelopment of the underground arcade that we have called home for some 36 years. 
weeks it was underground, I remember. We were looking for a new central London location for our shop. We will continue with our mail order website, which has over 14,000 items available. Wow. I can't believe it. I mean, I shouldn't make too much of a deal about it because I've not been in there since 1995. Or six or ninety-seven, maybe. So, yeah, so I shouldn't cause a fuss, but still, it's sad because that was it had been around longer than I had at the time. No, it's not true, is it? If you close up for thirty-six years in two thousand twenty, I was older than thirty-six in two thousand twenty. I was older than 37, in fact. What is the oldest magic shop in London? Davenport. I can't believe it. This is permanently closed. Did they... Did they find... Stephen Rosenthal? they not find a new place is my arm is my question I'm quite excited about no wonder I couldn't find it I put in Fathom Boards F for feel Fathom Boards not Davon Boards blimey I still come up as a hair and beauty salon it's probably because it's closed, they're not they're not gonna publicize something that's closed, are they? I guess. Magic shops magic shops in my area. Gaming, ace comics, rooks. Simply magic. <gasps> Is this? Is that a website? Let's have a look. Walk around close hand table music magic. No, it's someone promoting themselves. Stop it. Maze and says someone's already just uh, Oh no, that's uh, like a crystal shop, like actual magic magic. Not a slight hand. Crystal threads. The thing is, all you gotta do is just go online and get anything you want now. I need to sell stuff. What can I sell? How can I earn a living? Anyone? <laughs> I just, I think about it like, yeah, I'm nearly 50 now. I'll be nearly 40 soon. Oh, I was nearly 30 last week and I just the more I think about maybe travelling or you know if an emergency comes up and I need to get my little pick me some help at the, at the, the doctors the vet you know the veterinaries Am I going to be able to afford it? Because I had to stop the insurance. I couldn't afford that anymore. So I don't know. Just. He's got such a wobbly head. When he's lying down on his stomach. And I just move his neck. His head wobbles. <laughs> I'm sorry Vin. I want to see what's in the other magic shops. Because. London. Best magic shop. I wonder. <sighs> Davin Bolts online. Davin Bolts. What wow, keeps coming out? Oh, magic shop. Permanently closed. But where's the website though? Where is? 
is the website. Is here saying permanently closed. Photos about. Why is there no website? There needs to be a website. Davenport's website. Magic website. Davenport's magic shop. Okay, see all results. Collection. Yep, got it. Why are they called to themselves the Davenport Collection? A collection, a growing resource of magic and entertainment history. A collection of magic and entertainment history. Lewis Davenport founded Davenport's magic business in 1898. Ever since the family have been accumulating magic tricks, Novelties, jokes, posters, programs, photographs, and other paper ephemera. Wow. Well, I suppose maybe, maybe they call themselves a Davenport collection because Davenport was gone, the website was gone. But did they have a website when they were in the building? Why not just keep that, you know, when they were a physical business, why didn't they keep that website? I have so many questions. Duke of York's Theatre Christmas Magic. So these look like, um, current overview, latest news. Okay, let's have a look, latest news. Magic Circle History Day, 8th of June 2024. <sighs> so, um, so this is, is still kind of, they're still doing stuff this year. Right. Let's have a look. Wow. There's a lot of things to search through. Okay, um, rope magic. Rope magic. Let's just click if it's got anything. Results from my rope magic. The Conradi rope trip. Trick trick. Robert Ellisy Vishnu rope trick. Demon Rope and Wand The Miracle Rope Cutter Trick Gone to Lunch Indian Rope Trick Demon Cased Demon Magic Ring Steve Bird Blimey Oh well That's weird Anyway I went to I went to that shop anyway Davenport's it's not there anymore. I went in there and I just, I got the very basics really. I kind of got some books on how to do magic. And I was told that they were the best, really thorough, but for kind of, I suppose, quite easy tricks basic stuff like um, slight hand, rope tricks, I had a book on mental, um, mentalism, I still remember the cover, it was, it was white and it was kind of black, black kind of swirly stuff on the front. And it was mentalism. I think it was called mentalism. Wow. I can't remember. I can't believe I can remember that. It wasn't a big book though. And I got some cards and I got some uh, other bits and bobs and yeah. The thing is that's not the first time I got into magic because 
for those that may not be aware if, if you're not in my country my the country that I own if you're not here we had a bit of a a bit of a big kind of magic period this is before David Copperfield before David Blaine I know David Blaine was after David Copperfield it kind of went David Blaine Penn and Teller David Copperfield no David Copperfield Penn and Teller then David Blaine and then uh, I'm not sure really I didn't really kind of follow it anymore after that but in the 80s there was the biggest magician in the country was called Paul Daniels and he used to he basically was a superstar here not only did he have his own TV show for decades like a magic show he also sold magic kits now he's not with us anymore but he was Paul Daniels let's have a look Daniels he was around for a long time from 1938 to 2016 he did his catchphrase you like this not a lot about his career but I'm just going to have a look at the showbiz career that's it I want to look at showbiz career T was he no he made his television debut on the long running talent show Opportunity Knocks in 1970 and came second blimey so the Paul Daniels magic show started on BBC One from 1979 until 1994 that's over six years and it was a huge absolutely massive so he, he sold his magic tricks and I would get one I think most kids got a magic trick from Paul Daniels and ok let's have a look I'm just seeing whether or not It's not mentioning. If I look, Paul Daniels. Okay, so I'm just trying to think magic tricks, magic set. Some images here. Vintage Paul Daniels magic set. You can still buy them on eBay. <sighs> wow. Oh, I literally had that. But God made a weird noise in my throat then. I had that. Whoa. I can't believe it. Ten pound, just ten pound, and I can get back my magic. How? Where did they get it from? How did they get my magic set? The thing is, someone else has touched it, haven't they? That 
that's the problem. I don't know if I'd want to, yeah. Daniel's popular products. Let's have a look. If I just look at images, how many different magic sets did he have? I'm just wondering, maybe he only had one. That's magic. That was one of his uh, catchphrases. Apparently, he kind of transferred it. He just changed it a little bit. Because before doing ma magic, he used to be a singer. And uh, he had a little break. He'd always stop like a little for a couple of seconds during a song and shout out that's singing so and he he transferred that to when he became a magician um. seen a headline and just want to check this okay it's weird you know when someone posts something and it's like that's not even true <sighs> news entertainment I want the entertainment entertainment no, there's none. Business, science, health, education, politics, world. Uh, no, uh, go away. I didn't necessarily... Oh, oh, there was one coin. There was a coin trick. I can't remember what it was. Anyone? I don't remember. 
was definitely a coin trick. It involved a coin. I think it might have been a hole in a coin. No, pushing the... Pushing a cigarette through a coin. Or maybe a pencil. Or the wand, perhaps. magic, wasn't it? What's magic? So, yeah, I think, um, I don't know why I'm, t why am I talking about magic? Anyone? I don't know, I just started thinking about it. I've never talked about my magic journey. So I used to when I lived in Stratford, that's when I started getting into the magic. And I'd be in my room. Then he's making a weird noise with his throat. He's clicking. So he's lying on his side, cuddled up to me. I'm just stroking his head. And his, his foot is like, throws like, click, 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 like that. Very strange. He's so calm when he's asleep or when he's just relaxed. He's so peaceful. And now making some weird noises. i tell you what's strange though. He barks at stuff that he hears every day. Okay. And I'm like, why? Why are you barking? Yeah, when the dust people, the refuge collectors, arrive every two weeks. And they make so much noise. It does not make a sound. does not care. He used to bark at them. Doesn't anymore. Maybe it's because they don't surprise him. You can hear them from a mile off. Do you think that they have their interviews? Like one, they they hold their interviews in a in a park. Their desk is in the park. But the interviewee's chair is on the other side of the park. And the only way that person will get the job is if the interviewer can hear them clearly from the other side of the park. Only people with a shouty talking voice seems to get those jobs. They're so loud, and I have done that work. I've done it in the past. Everything's in the past, blimey. I've done that. I've, I've swept, I've swept roads behind a road, you know, a refuge cart, truck thing. I've cleaned estates, council estates, emptied and stuff like that. I never made much noise. <sighs> There's a hero if you look inside yourself. I do sometimes wonder though if I had stuck at some of these things. Let's say the magic, for example, as that's what we're talking about. I wonder if I could have been quite good at it. If I'd have stuck at the web design. Because I really got into it for a year. Just over a year, year and a half. Absolutely loved web design. And then. 
computer or the internet even probably for two years so between September 2001 and September 2003 I don't think I had any internet which is weird in fact I don't think I might have got some internet connection <sighs> maybe the end of the year 2003 perhaps and then I've pretty much as it had internet the whole time since then but for like two years pretty much well at home I didn't have internet between beginning of the summer so we're probably talking May time, 2021, all the way to whenever it was. Wow, because I got my own internet back then. So there's a phone bill, like an internet bill that I didn't pay. I just forgot that it was there. It's, it's one of those weird things. And uh, they searched for me. <laughs> I think two years later I got a, a letter with a bill. And uh, just like, oh, okay. So I spent about two years paying that off. Like, really happy. I don't know why I remembered that, but I do remember where the table was, where the computer was, in that studio apartment, before I moved out, um, in 2004, I should have stayed there, I don't know, I just, the noise downstairs was beginning to annoy me a bit. Well, a lot. Well, I just wanted to get out. But, uh, to be fair, a few other things happened as well. So, yeah, there was good reason. But if I'd have just stuck it out, I probably would have got a council flat a lot quicker. A lot quicker. But, because I was on the council list. But it's okay, it doesn't really matter. We got there eventually. Just took another 10 years. Well, 11 or 12 years. Did you, did I ever tell you that I had this business idea this was probably 2000 and it was basically going to be a search engine but not like Google because back in the days when did, when did Google start? let me just check when did Google start? Google started 1998, okay, right, search engine, search engine, right, history of Google, when did the first Google start, okay, 1998, okay, right, it's not a good example, but My idea, because
because I always found, and I still do, the search engines are so muddled, and they give you like so much stuff that's not relevant. And I wanted to have a tidier way of doing it, so it's going to be more of a a search engine, but a database where you just click on something, then it takes you to a it's like a menu really. Click on one thing. Then it gives you a choice of other things to click on. Then it gives you another choice. And eventually you end up with exactly what you want. So for example, you're living in California and you want to find a judo club for for your child under, under 10. So you basically just click start what you're looking for and you can say like if it's sports click on sports and then lots of different lists of sports judo and then you've got like judo shops judo equipment judo clubs judo clubs where you state your country then you then you say where in the country california and where and you can put in the district or whatever and then I'll say what what age group, you know, because it might just be all age groups, and, and then you can ah oh, you know it's whatever, and you just click that one, and then maybe it give you another choice of prices, or you know maybe, or it might just give you a list of three different websites, and then you've got it, you've got it down to the three rather than going through yeah it takes it might take a minute to go through it to get to that point but you've saved so much time and it end up not surfing the net like you know people used to I still do that sometimes not so much now Anyway, I had this idea, and uh, I had the domain name. I knew what I wanted. I knew how I wanted it to be, but didn't have the expertise to do it. I also wanted to raise money for charity. So I wanted it to, to be a charity, you know, or a non-profit or something like that. So I visited a place that I found online that was a, a website where there was like an IT company but they did a lot of stuff for the community and I spoke to this man who was lovely and he said yeah well I like your idea what you can do is if you come back on next Tuesday I've got someone who, who's here, he'll be able to help you do it, he'll be able to help you do the stuff that you need doing, that you can't do. I said, brilliant, shook his hand, did a few cartwheels, and then went home. I turned up on the date, Tuesday, two o'clock or whatever, the bloke I spoke to wasn't there. But the chap that he mentioned was and he wasn't so friendly and he said oh, what are you looking to do I said yeah here, this is it he said okay and he started talking about how much it's going to cost me I said no 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 you're doing it for free he said no 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 I'm not I said, but Eric, whatever his name was, he said that you'd do it for free because that's what you're here for, to help people. He said, I don't care what Eric said, I'm not doing it for free. I said, so you, I said this is going to be a charity. And he said, I'm not a charity. I, 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 I didn't say you were a charity. He said, I'm not volunteering to help you with your website. So, I left. And before I left, I did backward cartwheels. I wanted to take the 
those cartwheels back. So I did them backwards. I bashed my leg. And a few funny looks. So I then kind of went on. I still had that domain name for years, but I didn't do anything with it. Uh, I did try and build the website with my cousin, and we had another idea, which was going to be, basically, I guess it's a directory, isn't it? A directory, and online directory of... places, places where you can uh, go to gyms, health spas, things like that. And we went to the, we didn't really plan it very well, but he was much more business minded than me. And we spent, we stayed up all night trying to finish the touches on his website. We were both using the code and HTML. So he was doing it on a computer, I was doing it on this little laptop, which, bearing in mind this is 2000 and like probably in 2000, so laptops, it was a strange thing, but it worked. We were listening to music all night long doing this, and then I went home, got a few hours sleep, and then we went to the bank, we had a meeting about this business idea and similar kind of situation like yeah it's a good idea but go away <laughs> it's, it's like you know we're not going to invest we can't not invest we can't lend you money because I think at the time I was unemployed and he was blimey I think he was only 17 or 18 so we didn't really have much to stand on as far as getting any help. But you know what, if I'd have stuck at it, not, not the second idea, but my original idea, and I'd have kept building that, bearing in mind 25 years later, 24 years later, It would be a huge website. There'd be millions of pages. And it would be concise. And I'd have a full-time team, probably by now, editing it, changing it, updating it. And it'd be worldwide, not just, you know, it was gonna, I was gonna start off London and then work, you know, build up around the country and then go from there. And with the technology, and you know, I was doing it with HTML, but there was, I don't know, if, if I'd have gone the right way, if I knew, had any kind of business acumen, I could have maybe been something good. It was called Tidy Search. Seriously, I had a website called tidysearch.com. That was my domain name. And it was online. I did start it. But it was just, you know, I kind of just used the yellow pages. And started off like that was, you know, accountancy. Just click on A, and B, C, D, and then accountancy. And all those things come up. And then from accountancy, you got, uh, I don't know, bookkeeping, uh, tax avoidance, schemes, I don't know, whatever else is on there. Another thing I was going to do, <laughs> it might have been part of my, blimey, what was it for? Maybe it was part of this. I think it was part of the tidy search. I went into the library and I got all of the yellow pages from the whole country. And there was lots of them. All 
by district or by like yeah there's a lot I don't know if every single one was there but there was a lot of them and I went to the section of the hypnotherapists and I photocopied every page So it cost me a fair bit of money to do that. They must have wondered what on earth I was doing. But I spent hours and hours and hours and hours and days doing that. Huge big pile of paper with the information on. I counted it. I think I ended up with five. There were 5,000 hypnotherapists in the country at that time that were listed in the yellow pages which isn't that many really but there was probably a lot more than that that weren't listed to this day I can't remember what I did with that information because it was at the beginning of the year beginning of the year I always seem to have a little bit of a little spurt of energy a little bit of a I don't know I was going to say like a little bit of a fart pushing me forward into the year like getting me excited about like let's, let's start something That's why when I started doing these, what any of my recordings I've done, I started it all kind of really 2006, and my girlfriend just, I just split up with my girlfriend. I really needed something. <laughs> I needed something to take my mind off of that. I needed to chuck myself into something. That's when I came up with the idea of doing a free pain relief service in my local town. And then everything else kind of came from that. I mean, I'd already tried to do the free pain relief service two years previously, but it just nothing came of it. But this time I decided I was going to really promote it. Do leaflets, put adverts in papers. Like really go for it. And yeah. It was, I even got a, I got a different phone just so I knew that if anyone called it was for that. Like a different number. Pay as you go. Cheap phone. Had that phone for years. I still see it in my dreams sometimes, which is weird, it was a silver thing, a little bit bulky, yeah, I'm pretty sure I used to give it to people, I might have used it sometimes, I don't know. I don't know why I'm trying to think. Oh well. Yeah, so that's it really. I can't really... Magic. I haven't really talked about anything that I've done today. Not done an awful lot. seven it's dark outside it's, it's getting darker earlier I know it's normal and it's supposed to be like that I'm not really yeah there's no point moaning oh there's world championship boxing on Friday morning 
starting at 10 o'clock here it's in Australia what a brilliant day wake up and there's a like a boxing on a world title fight yeah baby so that's good and uh, there's quite a few things to look forward to this month Big Brother starts on the blimey I've forgotten it now Brother starts this Sunday. This Sunday. Wow. Because it's now Wednesday. So Big Brother starts. So we've got boxing on Friday. Big Brother starts Sunday. And then the following week. We've got. personal opinion probably the best boxing night on like so far this year it's the best one out of all of them and it's Bivol against Better BF but also Frazier against uh, Fabio and just them two them two alone them two fights were just I'm so looking forward to both of those My degree course starts on, is it the 8th? So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So that's next Monday. My degree starts. What? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. No. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I need to figure it out. I'm going to, I have to check that now. It's going to bug me. It's going to bug me. Going to bug, 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 going to bug me. <laughs> right, so uh, come on. Open University, where are you? a thing today creating a study network workshop Wednesday the 2nd of October 1 till 2pm I missed it damn I did go I did watch the one yesterday I mean last Wednesday sorry that was in the evening though why is it not coming on open university when does it start? When does it start? 28th of September. It's time to get back to study. That means one thing. Welcome week. Join us 28th of September to 6th of October for events. Draw. Where are the events? A past attendee. As an Open University student, you're automatically a member of the Open University Students Association, which is the student union. How do I know if there's anything going on? Welcome. Hello. Okay, so I'm just reading this. 28th of September to 6th of October. Competitions, events. Okay, let's have a look at events. Um, welcome. I've missed that. Welcome week fair. Exeter Open University. Quiz night. Right club meet out to What does that say? Feed your mind with mind apples. <laughs> Meet the 
disabled students group, chess club and introduction. Have your say open. What? Look at this. Are you primed? 1st October. Cancelled. Wonder why. Dunno. Are you weather and climate club? 2nd October. Great impact. So do that via services. Theatre at Bombay. I don't know what any of this stuff is. Oh, come on. Move along. Inverness. Okay. If I put in... Put in my town, see what comes up. Upcoming events. Nothing. Okay. Put in the area. Nothing. <laughs> oh well. Oh, what I'm going to do then is this. I'm going to log in. Log in, log in, log in. Am I still logged in? sign in okay it's using my face ID good sign in find your course no I need is the student home student home okay I can't even see your emails update study record Microsoft uh, uh, update personal study record. Let's have a look. It should give me the date on this. I reckon. I reckon. I reckon. I reckon. I reckon. I reckon. Yeah. Come on. doesn't seem to want to open anything. That's strange. Help Center. Access to your personal calendar. Okay. A personal calendar. Key events. Oh, it's not got anything on there. strange your tutorials and study events maybe you'll be on there right tutorial schedules for two tutorials and days are made available before your module starts right you haven't blocked any tutorials yet Access to your personal blog. That's weird. Your tutorials and study events. Right, I just been there. It didn't give me anything. How to sign up? Oh, you student, this student got a bit of personal details. Are you course a Okay. Tutorials. Tutorials for my one is now available. Visit your tutorials and test study events to see the dates and make a booking. Okay, buy me. Right, this should tell me. Block one. Introduction. What? Welcome. According to this, it's already started. No, it can't have already started. What? Learn 
doesn't make sense. How can there be stuff on there? Block 1, Introduction, 5th to 11th of October, Module Website Open, Tutor, News, Recent Activity, All Weeks. So it's the 5th, the 5th of October, not the 8th. The 5th. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's a Saturday. It starts on a Saturday. Saturday. So apparently, week 1 is the 5th to the 11th of October. Week 2 is the 12th to the 18th. Week 3 is the 19th to the 25th. Week 4 is the 26th of October to the 1st of November. Week 5 is the 2nd of November to the 8th. Week 6 and 7, 9 to the 22nd of November. That's the first assignment, which is a TMA 1. 23rd to the 29th of November. Week 8. That's the Block 2 introduction. Wow. Wow. Okay. This is a... This is becoming real for me. Real. Real. The self. So, um, week 9, 30th of November to the 6th of December. Week 10, 7th to the 13th of December. Week 11, 14th to the 20th of December. only get a break from the 21st of December till the 3rd of January. That's two weeks. That, what? I can't... <clears throat> when does it finish? May. 31st. It finishes 30th of May. When do I get <laughs> I'm looking at my breaks now. Twenty nine. What? I get a break for Christmas. Break for Christmas. And the next break is the 29th of March or the 4th of April. That's one week. That's it. The whole year. The whole year. No, what about half term? Where's my half term? When I was at university, the first time we broke up, beginning of December, pretty much, and I had at least four weeks off. We had half term, we had like at least two weeks, one or two weeks of half term. We had time off at Easter. They're really... The fifth is the introduction. Then the second week, what is childhood and youth studies? Week three, the psychology of youth and... Uh, the psychology of childhood and youth. Week four, embodied childhood. Week five... Block one consolidation. So this is the whole lot. Then there's the essay. Week six and seven. So technically that's two weeks off, <laughs> isn't it? If I get it done before that week. So week eight, block two introduction. Week nine, the self. Week ten, diverse families. Week eleven, young people's mental health and well being. Then there's a break for Christmas. One week. Only one week. Week 12, education and learning. 13, block 2, consolidation. Weeks 14 and 15, essay. Or TMA 02. So that's, I guess it's an essay or something. Block 3, week 16, 
Introduction, Block 3, Week 17, Children's Lives and Models of Disability, 18, Week 18, Race, Racism and Ethnicity, Week 19, Global Childhoods, Week 20, Gender in Children and Young People's Lives, Week 21, Block 3, Consolidation, 22 and 23 is the third essay, that's the end of March, then you've got block, uh, week 24, 5th of April, introduction, block 4 introduction, week 25, digital childhoods and youth, 26, adolescence, 27, week transitions in childhood, youth and beyond, Week 28, Block 4, Consolidation. And then the final ETMA. ETMA. What's the difference between TMA and ETMA? I don't know. ETMA. Cut off date, Tuesday the 27th of May. It says here, 10th to the 30th of May. Oh, blimey. So, 28th of September. Learn about child and you. So that's session one. Plan your study. Why you study in childhood and what you expect from session two. Navigate the module, the module reader, developing study skills. How will my learning be assessed? Session 3. What does a good childhood mean? Research in childhood and young people's lives. Reflected on childhood, meet the team. Session 4. Note taking, sensitive content. Then there's a summary, references and acknowledgement. So, this is what I should be doing already. Welcome to the course, basically, before, so before the fifth, because it's second now. Second, third, fourth, fifth, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so. Wow, so I should have been studying that one already. Going through how to do stuff and... And I haven't, because I thought it started on the 8th of October. So I need to get onto that, not tonight. <laughs> I need a break. But tomorrow I need to get onto that. And then on Saturday, I start the course like proper. Wow. Block one, introduction. Session 1, Professional Context, Sharing Your Ideas, Module Themes, Blimey. I'm glad I checked this out, because if I hadn't, I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have realised that... I mean, imagine starting off behind right from the start. That's not a good start. So, luckily, it'll be okay. I hope. I know. So that brings me to the end of this here recording. Thank you for listening. Wow. I just... I'm actually a student. I'm officially a student again. Because the course has already started. Like, the introduction part's already started. But the actual studying, the proper studying, starts on Saturday. I'm actually a student again. I don't know, it just, it's just weird. It's really weird. It's 
it's just really weird. I need to uh, manage my time a bit better. Wow. I can't just say wow I'm like a little kid. Opening presents, I know you're like, wow, wow. Blimey. Mind you, when I was a kid, I was, depending on my mood, if I was in a good mood, I'd be like, wow, every time I opened a present. If I wasn't in such a good mood, I'd be like, next, next, next present, next present. Is that it? He's got more than me. I used to like to, uh, I used to like to leave the big presents to, la to last, but also leave some small presents to last as well. That way, when the big presents I'd opened, if they were, well, there was, because sometimes the bigger presents was something that I didn't necessarily want. Not in a bad way, but like clothes. I didn't want clothes. I didn't want new trousers. You know, I, don't, I didn't want a new school uniform for Christmas. That was not a present, as far as I was concerned. You might as well give me a, a roll of toilet paper. That's the kind of present it is. Like some mouthwash. Some soap. Like the amount of times I would get soap given to me. Deodorant. Shampoo. Talcum powder. That's not a present. That's, I mean it is, but they'd, they'd always have them in these box sets, wouldn't they, for Christmas. It's like, first of all, you, are you telling me that I stink? Secondly, this is, it literally is just the same as toilet paper. It's, it's like something we have to use. It's not a gift. You wouldn't give someone toothpaste, would you? A toothpaste kiss, a kit. Uh, but you know, Christmas toothpaste kit, you don't get them. <laughs> Mint chocolate flavoured toothpaste. That they missed they missed that would be a good one. <laughs> chocolate flavoured toothpaste. Brown toothpaste. I remember years ago while I was at school. This bloke came around and he gave us this gel to put in our mouths. And what it did is it showed off the plaque in our teeth. And it would be, I don't know, it came up like a different colour, apparently. So, you know, the, 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 the bloke said, oh, just put it in, rub it into your teeth. And then uh, I come back and we'll check everyone's teeth and uh, he said he, he actually called me out he's like yours is the worst out of all of them and I remember to this day what I said to him I said I've not put it in my mouth yet he didn't know what to say I mean, they were my baby teeth, I was only 15, so, considering I never went to the dentist until I was probably 8 years old, maybe 7, I didn't do too bad with my teeth, they probably, I mean, I don't know if I'd, I'm not sure if I'd ever, no, I had brushed them. I did clean my teeth when I was six or five, but it was kind of like one of those, unless they're watching you do it, wouldn't really do it. And I remember I when I first, when I had the flat above the chip shop, I remember I was in the evening, did a wee wee, ready to go to bed. underneath the cold tap for a few seconds and put it back into the bowl, you know, the toothpaste holder and kind of opened the door and looked around and I realised I don't need to do that anymore. You know, I 
just I don't have to brush my teeth and it was weird because once I realised I didn't need to do it I wanted to do it okay it was a condition of me staying in the job that I cleaned my teeth apparently some of the some of the customers had a bit of a problem when you can smell I mean a chip shop the smell so strong of like the fish and the chips and all that stuff it's hard to smell anything over that so I think my teeth needed occasional anyway let's not oh itchy 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 I went through this phase I was brushing my teeth like four times a day five times a day I remember I saw someone that I I've known for ages but and she like wow your teeth are so white have you got if you had them have you had them whitened I said no I thought she said it like that I, I stood back as well I said no did you know did you know that not many people know this but did you know that uh, kangaroos can't walk backwards did you know that yeah I found out recently it's, uh, I'm one of the few people that know this I don't know can't remember where I got the information from pretty amazing though isn't it they can't walk backwards mind you either can I so hey why would you want to walk backwards The only reason to walk backwards is if I want to look slimmer. But, uh, that wouldn't work though, would it? Oh, he's lost weight, but he keeps banging into things. This is like, uh, where? And his, hair, his face has got very hairy. listening remember to be kind to yourself as soon as I said I've got to go Vinny wakes up take care remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy lots of love bye not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace But also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer. after the recording is ended so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow
and then by listening regularly especially if you find like some people do and myself as well I sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me and I'll just listen to it over and over again every morning, every evening there was this recording from we're going back to about 1999 it, was, uh, it wasn't hypnosis but it was a guided visualisation so it kind of was hypnosis really and I managed to find it again and it still has the same effect on me and part of it was the person's voice relaxed me it just felt so peaceful and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players press the play button in fact it might have even been a tape a tape recorder I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis. And long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if, if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade
maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back, some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realise by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. And if I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze, even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Was snoring or was a pig turned up? I 
that's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. This allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice in which you breathe so naturally you breathe so very easily and smoothly. my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, 
just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. joyful heart time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever. in this moment. Completely free. Saying that the mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy. physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of 
every part of your body. Muscles in your legs relax, relax. Pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepening each part of your body. Further and deeper and deeper. In the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings in your wrists Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. Peaceful. 
deeply. a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. slow in your stomach. Your back. Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply.
spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. shins and your calf muscles, Eons of peace and tranquility spreading through your body, tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers. all the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more.
space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. to notice your forehead and your eyes in a sense of complete freedom. And 
absolute freedom. have noticed your mind drifting Blissful peace, blissful peace.
Captain Dyer. Body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice. You give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day. Take a break from your life as it is. And you give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off 
and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body it's almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort and all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour however long you want it to be to just rest and allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation calmness which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body and as I focus on each part of your body you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on 
will continue to relax deeply. And those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon will just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Focusing on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release. experience in the back of your neck, moving 
down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from the spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back your hip area start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. focus on your shoulders, you may notice they're already feeling really loose, they're already Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. They feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. The 
feeling your shoulders. Seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles, but also relaxing the bones. your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms, healing, you feel so which sends that deep healing message into your arms, you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So, so calm. spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows, including your elbows, your circumference spread forearms and your wrists, feeling so heavy, yet at the same time, so gentle. 
the sense of real peace. It just seems to Muscles on your thighs, your knees so relaxed. 
muscles and your shins are permanently start counting down now from 20 down to 1 you can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps and each step all 20 steps and each step represents a level of comfort each step 
represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Seventeen.
14.
six.
and you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. Your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, to focus in on your eyes. You'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. And you may Just allow yourself to do that. Now, focus in on your eyes. You're going to begin counting down from ten down to one.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like you're counting down from 10 to 1 what do you expect me to do man you expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down so try it again but this time I'll go a bit slower this time as you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. 
you just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1. It's that space that you have, that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap And the more I count down from 10 to 1, the bigger that gap becomes. So there's that gap of calmness, of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it removes those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. Allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. The gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the, the stress and the tension falls into the gap. gives you that distance, that space, now, 10, 9, 8, Seven, six,
what is your body feel now? Can you notice the that you're feeling calmer? feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs, just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now but just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip and then goes down to your knee joint. Now this is a big area, it's a very heavy area, very strong, probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we, perhaps, give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. they actually do for us all through our lives it may, it may seem sound really weird but I think that all of our body parts especially our thighs need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of acknowledgement. A thank you. Gratitude for what our thighs do for us. I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Well, 
it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors, otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, gain such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. still have that attention on your thighs, maybe notice how your thighs feel, maybe notice that they are relaxing more deeply, and as you focus now bottoms of your legs, your shins and your calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. You know, anyone that's had even a, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how, how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that, you know, logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms, which is, okay, doesn't, can't see any problem with that. Because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then lead into your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile, and there's the calf muscles of course, when I was younger I couldn't see the point in calf muscles, they didn't seem to do anything. Like, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. 
but of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins, there to protect your lower legs. Shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone. Leading, of course, to your ankles and your feet. But we're not going to focus on your feet, we're just going to focus on the legs. I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course there's the muscles, the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive. Sensitive to the touch. Sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. All this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs. Massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees, and of course there's the back of your, your knee, you know the inside crease where your knee is, it's a very sensitive area, very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. course it's protected by your legs so 
You can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. That fold in between your legs. You can just massage with your fingertips. Imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue. You can of course feel the, the bones of your knees heating through your fingertips. And then as you go down, your calf muscles. Now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins. Massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are. Because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body, they're more precious than any jewel. When you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with the idea of having love for your legs showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, massage the muscles and the bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly. Your knees, your calves, your ankles. The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs. Yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, it's still a lot of weight, these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact, my whole legs do. My feet, feet also go. Whew my toes clap 
Okay, so that happened. Possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say. Possibly. But boring or not, everything I said is true. Your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect. They deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that journey of comfort. feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched, even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. It's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. Continue to feel wonderfully relaxed. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how 
you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling calmer not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about starting with number five four As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body, you may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. And the more your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music of course you're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people of course you might be but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own so no distractions When you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises, a sense of comfort starts to grow, and without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical. This is just a natural process. Something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost, you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to 
take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep. Depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting you can also if you choose stay focused on my voice and really enjoy process gradually relaxing each muscle in your body effortlessly Just observing the sensation of letting go. your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful
relaxation. And as you focus on your mind, you may notice that there are some thoughts still there some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love, like little petals from a flower, you just sprinkle it over them, petals filled with love towards those thoughts, to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. So as you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts. just melt away and relax deeply with every number those thoughts will become more seven.
experiencing now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands, There's nothing needed to be done, there's no clenching of fists or tensing of fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing and focusing. Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation. your hands and fingers, becoming even more relaxing with each 
Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worry and overthinking and anxiety. Stuff. You know, 
take that away, which is what we do, what we do now. You're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. Almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. place where you can feel relaxed in your natural sense of comfort, a place where you can be you, where you can accept yourself for who you are, a place where you're not trying to anybody else ever a place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer 
have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before. As you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy Noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier when sleeping is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done You know that you were born, as we all were, with the ability to fall asleep naturally. You were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep, healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep. It's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely it's not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's very, very easy. 
permission to let go. Because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive way. positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions. As well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within that continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life. positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, just feels so nice, it's such a healthy place to be. within you, each and every day, moving forward, you are going to find that you're more relaxed, physically, It's not that you're thinking slower, it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing Negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity.
activity would disappear. And as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm, with all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned. It's barred. It's not allowed entry. Doesn't it doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here. Doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. nice, doesn't it, to just let go of everything, and I'm going to count down now from 20 down to 1. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. For now, twenty.
is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. Give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected. You expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed, naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress. Your organs and 
massage your body all of the muscles all of the fat all of everything every hair in your body is filled with that healing energy and then your brain Fills with that healing energy. The feeling of comfort. Of relaxation. Increases. Deeply increases. feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed not a main start to drift what's needed so if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation that's what you'll get if what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts that's also is by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me you give permission for your body and your mind in fact you give the command to your body and your mind to relax Drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, focusing on a different part of your body and you find yourself drifting but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting and you can alert again to my voice focusing different part of your body starts to relax even deeper because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone and the more you drift the longer you drift sometimes into sleep 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now, they almost seem to just melt into one. your right hand start and your left hand end, almost as if it's mixed together. Now focusing on your knees. on your elbows, focusing in on both of the elbows, just observing the feeling of your elbows.
letting you go. go of everything everything I'm going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported, and you feel comfortable, and the breathing is really easy, and you feel, you feel confident in how you look as well, so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session so none of that stuff matters whatsoever this is about you this is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face just so you can feel my hands so you can become accustomed to them and now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down to the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realize that you're safe and it's all good, it's all fine. And I'm gonna start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands now 
this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently moving from the bottom of your neck would be sort of near where your shoulders start I guess all the way up to your jaw your ears kind of area that side of your neck of course is a lot longer than the front of your neck Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. And this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow our knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders. Moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if, if you wish, to really release the tension, to really 
get into those muscles and let your fingers in there and you can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly it can all be beneficial for the relaxation. of the muscles in your shoulders. And now as we move down your arms, we'll do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you, I want it to still be attached, and I'll just massage the tops of your arms, all the way down to your forearms, into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm. leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside, it's much more sensitive skin, sometimes just having that stroked, can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. your right hand, just holding your hand in both of my hands, just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. same time, pressing down and massaging each finger, and then starting to massage the palms of your hand, just turning the hand gently, stretching it gently, and actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe. And as I put that right arm back down where it was, and I'll do the same with your left arm. Exactly the same. Massaging the muscles 
you are all the way down to your wrist, stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you really require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where there would have been that area at the top and between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards. stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back, but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want, moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again very gentle, yet firm as you choose, and eventually you get to the spine, you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. can do that a few times. Sometimes people use the knuckle or the you know two fingers and just go either side of the spine. Almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching your body, so that you feel more relaxed, but at the same time, rejuvenated. Now I'm going to move 
to one side, to your right side. And from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, you're going to massage that area of your back. I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push on one end that side all the way to my side, to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. It releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process, which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part. kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. And it feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, we'll move further up to the top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massaging that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue, uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from your chest. So it's all connected, the chest and the back connect together. I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then 
to move down a bit and I continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down Including your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. It's a very sensitive, gentle area. Working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose, using both hands, the fingers digging deep. of your back of your ankles just gently massaging that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit moving to the right foot, massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet. Gently but Firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, and you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle, stretching your toes gently, 
massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. And move them over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down, and this is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted, I could make a future recording where I spend more time in one particular area. As you move down to your calf muscles, Massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently. Moving them down your ankle and into your feet. Massaging the backs of your feet, bottoms of your feet. Stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually. And that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience for having your feet massaged. Feel it really good. Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As you move up. I can clean my hands. Make them all fresh. Because now I'm going to massage your face. Gently. Starting off with your forehead. If your eyes are closed, then you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. And just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, chin. moving down from your neck down to your chest starting by massaging 
inside the very top of your chest where the collarbone is either side of the collarbone Just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. It feels quite a large area. As you can move from one side to the next. some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. And then moving down again. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart, massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention. It feels really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, or just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. And we're going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently massaging from one side to the next moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button to the other side of you and repeat that process of relaxing deeply calmly you feel loose you feel free and there's something about having your stomach massaged it's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different
different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. So now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around the belly button. gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. As I now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles, massaging them. And I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down Massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. Moving down to your knees, gently massaging your knees. Sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin. Gently, softly, but firmly. Moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand. Just gently massaging the whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, the heel, the ankle, the toes, massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go, enjoy process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings that come just from Touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoying the feeling of deep. Massaged by me. Enjoy feeling deeply relaxed. do is blow out some candles from your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. All the way down to 
you want. And each time I say a number. You can imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. not a big blow, it's just a gentle and that candle will extinguish and then I'll say the next number as we move down and you can just blow that one out as well. And as we move down the numbers, you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed. If you need to sleep, you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you feel to me after a while or even though there may be background sounds where you are you be aware of those sounds them at all because they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds there's Horace the pigeon likes to say hello sometimes, and there's the odd plane that goes by, there could be traffic and trains in the distance, but none of that seems important whatsoever. blow out. 
inside. As you feel more calmer, I believe every candle you blow out burns. So simple. Now we're going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a is 100 but when you blow that candle out you will find immediately a slight change in how Positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness expanding. Eight. 
to follow.
Sixty four.
those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, what your body starts to do because you've chosen you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down and it's a nice feeling it's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. when you do give your permission and you give the say so you can say okay it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally your body just follows it's all like, like a breath of relief feeling at the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past where you get home and you just sit down in a chair maybe you kick your shoes off and like oh it feels so nice knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two feels blissful and just by sitting down like that your body knows that it's time to relax your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset and your mind you're prepared stress of your body to evaporate and when you 
tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax and see more and more just alien. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of the clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you could see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you choose to wind it up. The energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger, deeper and you may find that the more relaxed you feel that your mind starts to wander maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again. And that was just your mind drifting to sleep. Which is quite natural. Because sometimes when we're stressed and tense, we not may not actually be aware of what we need. What we physically or emotionally need in this moment, but when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all letting them go, allowing them to drop onto the floor. start to get in touch with the feelings of such relaxation. It it's feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser looser, even the breathing seems easier and more natural and effortless, as that pool of air enters through your mouth or nose into your lungs. and relaxation and then 
just breathing out any excess remaining tension and stress from every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things are to a standstill or maybe just much, much slower than before because your mind is not really needed in listening to my voice which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know that feeling completely calm, loose and positive benefits for your body, your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair that you have glistens. focus from the inside of your scalp where your crown is, you can start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain relaxing deeply. And as your brain continues to to the rest of your body and your mind to really relax even more deeply relax even more completely they're no longer necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling
ever-increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body, relaxing each and every muscle of your body. Go. 
do a body scan, focusing on firstly how you feel in your body, not trying to change how you feel, not trying to relax, not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, just accepting, observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment. Start off by focusing on your hands. Just be aware of your hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. Just maybe move your fingers a little bit. Opening and closing your hands very gently. Just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Very, very slow movements. Focusing now. you can just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands, maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently, but only very gently and very slowly. how your feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them. Maybe raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes. Perhaps squinting your eyes. Crunching up your eyes, just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focusing on your thighs, I'm going to just ask you to gently tense your thighs, just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, noticing and observing how your thighs feel
noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders, so as you focus on the back of your neck, you're looking up, maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down, perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left, but only very slowly and very gently. force anything, it has to be very, very gentle, just so that you can be more in touch with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. And as we now focus on the tops of your arms, the parts where your biceps and your triceps are, between your elbow and your shoulders, as you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, and then I'd like to just tense them, but very, very gently. in any pressure whatsoever on your arms, it's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment. Noticing as you gently, very gently and slowly tighten your muscles and then let go. Notice how the tops of your arms feel. stomach, the area, the lower abdomen area below your belly button, moving all the way down to your hips, just above your groin, maybe you are able to tense these muscles difficult thing to do, maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how your the 
physical sensations of your lower abdomen. And as you move your attention Noticing how your tongue and your mouth feels, and that may help by moving your tongue around your mouth, moving it to the left, maybe pressing it gently against the side of your mouth. up against the, the top of your mouth and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth. Always very slowly and very, very gently. So that you Just rotate your wrists by moving your hands in a circular motion very gently and slowly, just so that you can feel sensations that you are currently experiencing in your wrists, perhaps moving your hands up and down, again Just above your hips, where your coccyx are, and the whole. 
choice or an agreement that doesn't include the sides of the body because those muscles are very much connected. And those muscles also move into your hip area and then into your buttocks. physically able to do so, maybe you can very gently just move your body ever so slightly, very slowly, from side to side, just enough physical sensations of your lower back, as you now move your attention just if it's okay to do so gently open your mouth not wide and then stretching just very gently and slowly opening your mouth and closing your chest area, you never need to do anything to move your chest, because it moves every time you breathe.
those muscles and those bones in your midsection. Noticing how your hips feel right now. You feel very, very gently move your hips. Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching. It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small movements which make up the larger movements is always the case and when you move your hand it might seem like it's one movement but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other and what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body be 
begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations in your legs, whether pleasurable or not. Maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings just thinking them thinking about them as just being neutral just feelings not being particularly concerned but just noticing what your body is telling you feelings in your arms, instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins. The bones. Just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling Maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. What about your forearm and your right arm? right forearm, there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to, it may not feel like anything other than just a feeling, you know, it's there. feelings in your shoulders, perhaps your shoulders when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling, almost like your, both of your shoulders are just one thing, but of course they're not. Focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder. Maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. The 
course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of the back. sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently, but just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching your lower back. along that feel in your chest just noticing what sensations you experiencing in your chest right now. And there's so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to a chest, but the chest bone. You've got the muscles in your chest. Of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, well, mine aren't that different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest. But at the side, underneath, it's pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back, as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Whatever feeling there is in your chest. And when I notice that I focus on my chest, I feel it in my my back upper back. I mean, I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing. In. And it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. Yeah, it feels... Feels okay. Doesn't feel a little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe 
stiffness possibly I don't know notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason I think that's probably part of my upper back that connection between my shoulders and my upper back because I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back moving the shoulders backwards or up which then moves the I think it's the scapulars in the back Feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and then you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes way than it would normally. But you have to feel that you're able to do that. There's no point doing it if there's a, a, an issue with a per part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself at all times. yourself as you notice your mind how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording Peaceful is your mind right now. With nothing to think about, and just my voice to listen to, because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down, as your body continues to relax. Because that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect.
relaxation to fill your body maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to drift away as if you are moving further away from the body and the mind, just leaving that there. Kind of like an, an escape pod in a spaceship, like a movie space movie, you know, and they get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe to dream. Focusing on the evening, but those individual parts of your body that are relaxing one by one. that you weren't listening to my voice because your mind started to imagine 
something different maybe started to almost move into some kind of a dreamy state and then you become aware of my voice again and even though you may want to focus on my voice you may also wish to allow your mind to just drift naturally into that space of comfort and safety as you feel body like a warm blanket covering you gently keeping your body at just the perfect temperature Even if you can hear background sounds, they just don't seem to matter anymore. There's that sense of peace spreads through your mind. gentle breeze yet strong enough to blow away all negativity strong enough to remove from your mind any anxiety and stress was there before and blow away any other thoughts or feelings that just don't fit with the sense that is filling your body and your mind you focus on your mind and you count down from 10 down to 1 on each number you hear your mind will be calm see Just slightly and from ten down to nine just a slight movement from nine down to eight just another small down to 
to seven. That feeling is is a gap, almost like a gap. It starts to get a little wider. The gap between those feelings that you used to have. you have that are growing now, feelings of comfort and security and confidence, when that gap becomes wider, eight down to seven, seven down to six, and when you get to five, start to have a certain physical sensation, almost like there's a magnet outside of your head, sucking the tension and the stress and any remaining feelings that you don't want, sucking them skull. When you're down to four, you can start to really experience that sense of not just emptiness, but space. A place full of fresh air. where you can stretch. It's almost as if as you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sense of peace and tranquility growing. As it moves down to two, get to one, your mind just feels exactly how you want to feel, almost a perfect feeling, maybe a, a sensation place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all. And you can stay in that, that space of comfort and confidence in your own ability to create this space and this feeling of comfort within your own mind just by counting from 10 down to 1. And this is something that you can do yourself. sit down, maybe just for a few minutes, close your eyes, just count slowly from ten down to one, and can you experience these feelings? feel that way in your mind, your body copies your mind. And that feeling is spread through your spine and the nervous 
system into every part of your body travels through your bloodstream healing and relaxing every particle of your existence You can practice this a few times before the end of the recording and then you can practice on your own. Each time you count from ten down to one, the feelings of comfort, calmness and Deep relaxation becomes stronger and deeper. Filling your mind and your brain with these positive chemicals that spread throughout your body, relaxing you. So quickly, relaxing your whole body and mind, so very, very easily, just by counting from ten down to one. So we're going to do it now. Count from ten down to one, and I'd like you to repeat the number after me. So when I say ten, you can just repeat to yourself ten. Just notice, be aware of how you feel. say nine, you can repeat to yourself nine. Again, noticing the increase in comfort and calmness in your same when I say eight, when I say seven, six, when I say five, four, when I say three, Lastly, when I say one, you can repeat that number and of course when you do this on your own without listening to me, you can say the numbers at whatever speed that you feel is necessary for you, so you can adapt, so if you feel you want to say the numbers 10 down to 1 faster than I do, then go ahead and do that, or if you feel you want to do it yourself and you'd like to have more more space between the numbers, maybe take a lot longer to get from 10 all the way down to 1, that's 
makes your choice easy to do. to one that will be the end of this recording unless of course you're listening with music and the music will continue
sensing. Now open your eyes, noticing how you physically feel, having counted down from 20 to 1, allowing stress and tension to leave through your fingertips and your big toes. And as you focus on your fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly is, I suppose, quite an understanding considering the tension you've been exiting your body through your fingertips. So now we're going to count from 20 down to 1 again. This time, you're going to feel relief of tension and stress anxiety that you may have, leaving through your stomach, just leaving through your stomach, almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach from your navel to just above your chest or below your chest rather, so surrounding your belly button area whole area, you can feel the tension of your body, whatever's left, just releasing from that area. And you may notice that your stomach will become very relaxed as I count down from 20 down to 1. Now, 20.
nice again if you choose, or you can just keep them closed because it feels relaxing. Just notice how your stomach feels. Notice as you focus, just do a little scan of your body. Just notice how your body feels. Focusing on your upper body, your back, chest, stomach, legs, arms, hands, feet. Just noticing. And you know you may start to feel a nervous sense of tiredness, which may be the reason you're listening to this. on your forehead and if you choose you can incorporate your eyes in this focus as well so your forehead and your eyes just that whole area basically almost as if you were wearing a mask you know like a I don't know Batman mask or something Zorro or something, you know the kind of mask that covers your eyes, but also covers quite a lot of the forehead. So focusing on that area, because that's the area that you're now going to release tension and stress from your mind, from your brain, from your mind, and any tension that you may have remaining in your face, in your neck, in your jaw, in your eyes your forehead and in your scalp so basically any tension within your head area including your mind and your brain and that's going to be released through your forehead and your eyes as I count down again from 20 down to 1 Twenty, nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen. scan your face, your jaw, your eyes, your cheekbones, your ears, your forehead, your scalp, your neck, the back of your neck and the front of your neck, the sides of your neck and the throat. Just noticing comfort, your true 
just feeling that relaxation, not just in your head and neck and your mind, but also in the rest of your body. Just notice how loose and calm you feel and how easily is to just let go completely let go completely how easily so what we're going to do now Focus on the top of your head. And we're going to allow every last piece of tension or stress that might be lingering or hiding in your body, in your mind, in your head, to just be sucked out. sucked out into the clouds. Imagine a big cloud above your head, almost like a whirlpool. It's just going to suck that tension out of the top of your head and just take it away for good. So if you focus, imagine an opening in the top of your head without tension and stress and any remaining issues, maybe worries or concerns that are of no use to you now, they'll all be sucked out of the top of your head, taken away as I count down again from 20 down to 1. Twenty. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen. 
physically and mentally as well right now. How peaceful your mind feels. It feels so nice to just let go. To give yourself some space to breathe easily. take a break from all that pointless worry and concerns about things that we don't need to think about right now because this is your time to let go this is your space to enjoy feeling deeply Peaceful in your mind, relaxed in your body. You can feel so good, so nice to just not have to do anything, to be able to really enjoy that serenity. Peacefulness that comes with being in this peaceful space. And if you can keep this sense of calmness for as long as you choose. can do that. It's completely up to you. And you can keep this feeling of calmness physically and in your mind for as long as you choose. And I'd like you to make up your mind that you're going to relax. And I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide that you're going to relax. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that, I guess it is a command really, isn't it, when you're telling yourself, relax, in a gentle but firm way, that only you can really tell yourself in that way, because you can't really have someone else saying to you, now relax, relax, you know, um, it needs to be gentle, but you can't, someone else can't really have the same, the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality, over how you feel. Because when you say it to yourself, more. It's personal and your brain and your unconscious mind and your body listens to what you say. So for example, we'll test it out. We'll do a little test, a few little tests along the way and you can get more of an idea of the force 
positive force that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind quite quickly just by you telling yourself to relax. So I'm going to start by, let's, let's focus on your hands. So focus on your hands and just tell your hands to relax. So just say relax as you focus on your hands. You could say my hands are relaxed or I want my hands to relax. But I think if you actually do it directly by focusing and imagining that your hands can hear what you're saying, you know, like they've got little ears, which is a bit weird. So talking to your hands and just say, relax. Noticing. How your hands start to relax. focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So you're just saying the same word, relax. And find the right tone for you. You know, I might say relax, but you you might say relax or relax. You know, you, you might say it differently to yourself. And that's important for you to gauge what feels right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows. And just tell your eyes directly, relax. I just did that myself and sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different parts to relax, you know, because I start talking again and maybe that part hasn't relaxed fully. But what will happen is it will just continue to relax even though I'm talking. And that's happened with my eyes. Something else I noticed is when I started focusing on my eyes, they actually almost became, they got worse before they got better in a way. So sort of I felt a degree of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing. So I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there but I wasn't well, I wasn't focusing on it before so I wasn't really acknowledging it or um, really conscious to those feelings still continuing to relax as well as my hands actually. My hands have got a certain kind of energy, like not buzzing, but I can kind of feel a degree of energy in my hands. Maybe that's where the tension is being released. Maybe that's causing that. And 
legs part, I think we should focus on the back of the neck. That's a part which quite often, uh, well for me, holds tension. I don't know about for yourself, but I think it's quite a, a standard place where tension is sometimes held. So, and I'm, I'm doing the, exactly what you're doing as you do it as well. So I'm telling my body parts to relax as well. So if you tell your neck, the back of your neck, focus on the back of your neck and just say, relax in your own words, in your own tone, in your own voice. You can say out loud or you can just say it to yourself internally. But you're focusing and you're saying it literally to the back of your neck as if the back of your neck can actually hear what you're saying. So do that now, just say, relax to the back of your neck, and I'll do the same. and you, you may have had a similar thing is even though I was focusing on the back of my neck other parts started to I don't know show themselves to me or maybe because they want to be relaxed as well but I started noticing the feelings in my shoulders the tension in my shoulders and in my upper back whether that was because my my back of my neck was saying, no, I'm pretty much okay. It's the other parts that need attention. But my lower my my back of my neck is still relaxing. But I just became more aware of other parts that needed attention. Now this might happen and it's not, it doesn't mean that it's going wrong, it just means you're being notified of more places that also want to feel relaxed. So I'm going to focus on my upper back, so you can do the same, even if you don't have any uh, feelings of tension that are obvious in your upper back. If you just focus on your back and the whole area from your shoulder blades down to the middle of your back, down your spine. I mean, for me, it's more the shoulder blades that are more, you know, that's the parts that are really same now. Relax your upper back. But something strange happened now, and this often happens, I've been doing this for, what, 16 years or something, and I often, I don't know why I'm surprised, but amazed really, that there can be a feeling, so when I was focusing on the back of my neck, my upper back was starting to feel quite stressed and in need of attention. 
as soon as I started talking to you about that, about and talking about, you know, getting ready to ask the upper back to relax, my upper back already started to relax. It's almost as if it doesn't need to hear the words, it just needs attention. needs to be noticed. And that is something that often happens in this type of situation is when you start to relax a couple of parts of your body as we've done with our hands, our eyes, our eyelids and now the back of the neck, top of the back, upper back. The rest of the body seems to just take notice and decide in its own way to start relaxing. Other parts of your body start to just become looser. I suppose it's kind of like a bit of an avalanche, you know. The little ball starts rolling and before you know it, the whole of your body is completely relaxed and calm. And if you focus on your face, Focus on your eyes, your eyelids, your eyebrows, and the muscles around your eyes. And maybe you start to notice that your forehead is more relaxed than it was. Maybe your face is more relaxed. I would say my entire face is lot more relaxed than it was. So we're going to focus now on your shoulders. Again, just like before, just tell your shoulders. I mean, you, you can do them individually. You can do right shoulder, left shoulder. I just generally do both at the same time. And just tell your shoulders as you focus on them in your mind. Focus on how they feel. Maybe you can see them in your mind's eye. Just tell your shoulders. nice as they relax. But I do notice that when, especially with my back, is the connection between the different parts. The back, the shoulders, the neck. being all connected and being such a, a large part of your body, it's almost hard to separate them from each other. And my lower back has started to relax on its own. Maybe I'm going too 
really slow. And that could be an issue because we all go at different speeds. And the idea at the beginning of this recording was for you to be able to just say to yourself, relax. Without focusing on any particular part of the body. Because when you know that tending your hands can relax, your hands relax. You tell your eyelids and your eyes, the muscles around your eyes and your eyebrows to relax. Tell the back of your neck to relax. And it relaxes. You tell your upper back. Tell your shoulders to relax. And they relax. Hold your hands to relax. They relaxed. And they continue to relax. And you told your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows, to relax. They relaxed. the back of your neck, focus on the back of your neck, and you told it to relax, they relaxed, they continued to relax, and you told your to relax as with your shoulders you told your shoulders to relax and your shoulders relaxed It's not just that, it's that the rest of your body has also been listening, and that relaxation has been spreading. So from your eyes, the relaxation has spread to your forehead, around your face, into your skin, into your 
feel. Into the front and sides of your neck, and all the way down your chest. shoulders and then tap through your arms relaxing into those arms your upper arms your elbows your wrists letting go your lower back Just start to relax and content now, even more comfort spreading through your legs, all the way down to your ankles, the tops of your feet, the sides of your feet. your body relaxes more, your mind becomes slow, more peaceful. There's nothing going on in your neck. The air is peaceful. Your body continues to relax. body relaxing and beware what you say to yourself. sensations of comfort spreading throughout your body. Move 
Just tell yourself, relax, whatever's there, feeling completely comfortable. Starting now with number 20. Seventeen. Sixteen. Thirteen.
torso. Counting down from ten to one. Ten. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there, like you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? Try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, will you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs? Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. every number that I count down. Ten. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that Space between the muscles being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down, just being there, not doing anything, not saying anything, not needing to think about anything so it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap be 
comes. So there's that gap of calmness, of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away, relaxed, allows you to just relax, slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening, the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the, the stress and the tension falls into the gap. gives you that distance, that space, now, five, ten, nine, six, eight. Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. I'm just going to start with 
focusing on your thighs. Of course, it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now but just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs the bottoms of your thighs your outer thighs and your inner thighs basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip and then goes down to your knee joint now this is a big area very strong probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs but I don't think we perhaps we give enough attention to our thighs we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives how much they actually do for us all through our lives it may seem sound really weird but I think that all of our body parts especially our thighs need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you gratitude for what our thighs do for us and I know this may sound a bit strange and maybe you think why am I surely I should be out in in the garden hugging a tree or something um, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree that's why I'm doing this indoors otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree no I can't see the television from the tree if you move down to your knees Again, such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a, maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason it's then that I realise how much it does you know the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's 
temporarily removed. You know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. still have that attention on your thighs and you can notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you can notice that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now bottoms of your legs, your shins, and your calf muscles, and the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. You know, even it's had even a, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how, how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that, you know, logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms, which is, okay, doesn't, can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or a logical reason, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance helps you to get around and be mobile and these are calf muscles of course <laughs> when I was younger I couldn't see the point in calf muscles they didn't seem to do anything I'm like okay if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. There to protect your lower legs. Shaped in a way, almost as a protector for the bone. Leading, of course, to your ankles and your feet. But we're not going to focus on your feet, we're just going to focus on your legs. I realize now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing <laughs> on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on my feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness, even though we haven't been focusing 
on your thighs for a few minutes really focusing on your ankles there's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs almost that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations of course there's the muscles the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs but the skin on the outside of the thighs as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive sensitive to the touch sensitive to temperature and inside your thighs the bones there's the muscle there's the blood vessels the arteries all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs massaging the bones of your leg massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs and you could move down massaging inside your knees just massaging those bones with healing fingertips spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees and of course there's the back of your your knee you know the inside crease where your knee is it's a very sensitive area very feels very nice when you stroke it that might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often it's almost like a hidden part that crease in your legs it's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different course it's protected by your legs so you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs that fold in between your legs you can just massage with your fingertips imagine your fingertips going inside massaging the muscle tissue you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees even through your fingertips and then as you go down to your calf muscles now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles and massaging every single tissue of that muscle healing every part and then doing 
and sank in the shins. Massage you, gently stroking your bones, gently stroking them, healing them in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are. The legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. Now when you start to think about your legs in this way, change your perspective. It might sound a bit a bit silly to start with the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs massage the muscles in your bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all the tension just to show how much you care about your legs how much you care for what your legs do for you The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs, yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, it's still a lot of weight on these little ankles. stone, double that, yet my ankles support my body all the time, although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down, <laughs> in fact my whole legs do, my feet do also go toes clap, I'm so happy. about your legs is probably possibly the, one of the most thing, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing Your legs deserve not just respect, they deserve to relax 
deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that journey of comfort. feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. It's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. Continue to feel wonderfully relaxed. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling karma, not just in your body, but also relaxing your mind. And just notice how you feel. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to say. There's nothing to think about. Starting with number five. Four. Two. 
as you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body, you may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. And the more your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. is that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You, know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background, unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. When you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises, a sense of comfort starts to grow, and without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical. This is just a natural process. Something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost, you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep, depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier 
easier. You find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing. sensation of letting go. your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. Naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful.
Focusing your mind, you may notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. little petals from a flower, just sprinkle it over them, petals filled with love towards those thoughts, to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down. focus on those familiar thoughts as we count down this time from seven down to one with each number just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love kindness gratitude those thoughts. with number seven.
watching now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. Begin to focus the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands and your fingers, nothing needed to be done, there's no clenching of fists or tensing of fingers or anything like that, it's just noticing and focusing the body feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience the real deepening of that relaxation.
just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all that other stuff that we add and we have that stress and worry and overthinking and anxiety and tension. sense of peacefulness which comes through very quickly because ultimately it's just a feeling it's a feeling of comfort almost as if we've gone inside special place where everything is peaceful, a place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort, a place where you just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can relax yourself and hold you who you are and that sense of gratitude is in your eyes soaking into your body feeling energy soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each Every single part of your body. And you start to realize how actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain. just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment. It all 
so you start to realize that actually what's happening now is that healing, relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. Not just now, but tomorrow and the next day, as your health improves, not just your physical health, but your mental health, things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to, because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that seem to be able to before as you realize that you were the one who decides what affects you you're the one who decides to feel relaxed Noticing these natural developments of fear continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Improving, of course, your ability relax so much easier and sleeping is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done to fall asleep naturally. You were born with that ability. It just drifts off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, Sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try and <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or a holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we can start to drift. stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax and breathe and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright.
at some times as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that we lack self completely. It's not only a wonderfully pleasant that's all it is, it's just a side life, in a way. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given Suggestions that you have such an amazing effect of how you feel right now, as well. positive, beautiful way allows you to move forward in life in the direction that you choose for yourself. not that you think in this manner, it's just that your mind will be less cluttered up with unnecessary negativity, because from now on your mind rejects negativity. Activity 
arises. Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm, free that feeling of energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend that time in a in a special place where negativity. Doesn't des- doesn't deserve to be here. Doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. Create room for more comfort. More.
when you're listening to me 